فورن میڈیا ہے جو اسٹریلیا سے میڈیا پاکستان آیا ہوا ہے ان کے کیا تاثرات ہیں ان کے کیا جذبات ہیں وٹ ڈو دے تھنک کہ کہاں غلطی ہوئی کہانی ہوئی ہمارے ساتھ اس وقت موجود ہیں اسٹریلین کرکٹ رائٹر ہیں پیٹر لالور اور ان سے گفتگو ہم کریں گے سو پیٹر ویلکم ٹو گیم سیٹ میچ پیٹر ہاؤ یو فیلنگ یو ان لاہور ناؤ Uh, yeah, yeah, very excited to be in a new place. We had a great time in Karachi, we had a great time in Rawalpindi, and now we're in Lahore, and we hopefully will have a great time in Lahore. So you enjoyed, enjoyed watching the test yesterday, you were there at the stadium, and that last day, were you expecting that Pakistan would pull, uh, pull the complete day, and, or, or they would just collapse at any point of time? Anything could happen in Test Match Cricket, but no, I, I did not expect Pakistan to last. Well, that's a record, 170-odd overs and a, a record innings by your captain, Baba Razam. It was an extraordinary day's cricket. It's perhaps one of the best days of cricket I've ever seen. It's certainly up there among the best days of cricket I've ever seen. Hi, Peter. Adil here. Uh, Peter, the, the Test Match Cricket timings in Pakistan is pretty suitable for Australia because that's like covers the primetime television timing there in the afternoon and in the evening so how much attention this test series is getting in australia and how how much uh this test series is covering the sports conscious in a very sports mad country ah uh, yes well it's just the start of our football season in australia but there is a lot of interest in this series because as you as you guys well know it's 24 years since our side has played in pakistan uh, new test captain pat cummins who's only had one series um this is a this is a team that's captured the nation's interest particularly with its performances in the ashes where it beat england 4-0 thus far it hasn't beaten pakistan nor has it been peaked been beaten but uh, australia is uh, fascinated by fascinated by this cricket team fascinated by its new captain and by watching cricket in pakistan after such a long long time um peter when we talk about uh, pat cummins you've you've spoken about pat cummins but there's this uh, there's this school of thought that maybe he missed a trick by not putting follow on on pakistan at the very day the third day and they could have uh, maybe won this Test match. What's your take on that? Uh, well, I, my, my Urdu is not very good, but I think I heard you say earlier that uh, hindsight's a 2020 vision. <laughs> uh, it, in retrospect, perhaps it would have been better, but look, I, I liked the tactic. I liked the idea of giving the bowlers a bit of a spell that night. Sometimes you see the bowlers, when they turn around and bowl in another innings, things don't necessarily happen the way they were happening. Things that happened in that innings, wickets fell. Because, because of the reverse swing. Now, you weren't going to get reverse swing with the new ball. So, so you, that reverse swing was gone. We see that the, the Pakistan openers are excellent batsmen. In fact, the whole Pakistan top order is excellent. And I also like the idea of putting the side back out there so that the openers have to think about batting again. And then they come back in the morning. They don't know when they're going to bat. They only get 10 minutes to prepare for the change round. So I like the tactic. It didn't work this time, but gee, it came came really close to working, didn't it? So, Peter, has the, has the track at National Stadium Karachi settled the debate about the poor, unsporting wickets uh, in the Test cricket? Well, I think I heard you say that, uh, well, ask me if it was a better wicket. It was, well, it made for a fascinating contest. Yeah. Um, you certainly had to work hard. I mean, I think in this day and age, we're all used to cricket that, that happens very fast, and whether it's T20 or one days, one day, is, or even in the Australian summer. Uh, we had green, green top wickets where it was very difficult for the batters. But I found that a fascinating test match. It, you had to work so hard to get your wickets. Um, there, was, there was that afternoon when the reverse swing was happening and, and, and it became difficult to bat. So it had those fascinating changes. But I, I like, and even the Australian bowlers say the same thing. They take more pride in, in, in getting, a, getting wickets when it is difficult for them, when conditions aren't necessarily in their favour. So I liked that wicket. Uh, might have, uh, it, it would have been good, I think, if it had broken up a little bit more. But uh, hey, there was certainly enough opportunity there for Australia to win that test match. Had they held those catches, yeah. had two DRS decisions gone Australia's way and not the batter's way, um, that, that test would have had a different result. So I think that was a fantastic wicket. And, and we got crowds in for five days and uh, yeah. the crowds loved it right through to the last ball. Definitely crowd 
got everything that they wanted. But Peter, talking about uh, Lahore Test now, the third Test match, what do you expect? Well, Australia doesn't know what to expect. We, I, I'd like to ask you, actually, what sort of wicket uh, have you prepared for us here? I, I, I've read in the papers and uh, uh, um, written reports myself, in fact, that the uh, ICC curator yeah, has yeah. come out here, a Toby Lumsden, the uh, man who's in charge of all the different... Yeah. I think we've lost... Cool curator. Uh, curators and perhaps, yeah. mm. perhaps there's an attempt to make the wickets a little spicier. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's wait and see what happens. So, Peter, you must have seen uh, great cricket innings being played all around the world by the Australians and the non-Australians as well. Where would you put this this effort by Babar Azam yesterday and the day before? Where where does it do you think it is placed when you've been when it comes to the top innings that you have seen? I tell you, I tell you, when Babar Azam went out. I looked around and there was a young Pakistan fan behind me with his mouth open. I had my mouth open. I watched him walk off. I felt emotional. I really wanted that man to get 200. That was one of the better innings I have ever seen. I mean, he came in, what was the team? Two for 20 something when he came in? He yeah, grabbed 21. that team by the scruff of the neck and, and dragged it back into the game, almost to the point where Pakistan threatened to win the game. That was a magnificent innings. You're a, you're a blessed country to have a man like that leading you. Uh, uh, equally, I think we're blessed because I think Pat Cummins is a magnificent captain. And, and and what I like about both of those captains is they play the game in the right spirit. We don't see any yeah. of these spats, this ugliness, this sledging or confrontation. That cricket has been played in a really good spirit with a really good attitude and it's very competitive. And um, Boy, oh boy, is that, is, is that man a talented batter? Well, it was very um, unlike contest that there was no sledging yeah. and nothing. And they were all good boys. It was like gentleman cricket going on. But um, your, your views about Mohammad Rizwan? Oh, well, what can we say about him? <laughs> you have so much talent in this country. It doesn't seem fair. Every time we turn around, you have a, another great player. And... Uh, uh, equally, him that that innings of his, of course, saved Pakistan from from True. from defeat where after uh, your captain was out. So that was a great innings. He's a great batter. You've got so much talent in your batting stocks and in your bowling stocks. It's such a shame that there hasn't been test test match cricket here for so long, or top level test match cricket. And hopefully, we'll see a lot more of it because mm -hmm. because Pakistan fans deserve the chance to turn up and see these guys up against the best players in the world. To see Rizwan and Baba up against Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark and Nathan Lyon and Josh Hazelwood didn't play this test match, but Josh Hazelwood is a very good yeah. bowler himself. So, wonderful. It's just wonderful contest. It's great for cricket. It's great for world cricket. Wonderful contest. Peter, coming, yeah. coming to, the, to the sledging part, I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm reverting back to the previous question. I mean, what has gone wrong with the Aussies? They're not supposed to be such like good boys. I mean, I remember one of my first memories of watching Australia play Pakistan was Dennis Lilly and Javed Miyadad. I mean, just willing to bury each other in that cricket wicket and all. So is it like a change in the overall attitude of the Australian team or maybe this series is just a one-off? Look, I think there's a number of factors at play, but one of them most definitely is a change in attitude of that Australian team. The Australian team was sobered by the experience and, and shamed by the experience of what happened in South Africa a few years ago when yeah. players were suspended for ball tampering. That was that brought shame on the nation. They had to reconsider their approach to test cricket. And under Justin Langer, they decided to, to be a more humble team to try and make themselves loved by the Australian public again because there was a question mark about whether even the Australian public liked the way they played cricket. And, and the relations with opposition teams had grown very poor. There's another, a, a couple of other factors at play too. These players tend to know each other from T20 competitions around the world now. I watch training and I watch the players walk on and walk off. They're always talking to each other because they know each other quite well. They've, they've played together in the same teams in, in, the, in the PSL, in, in, in whatever other um, uh, T20 league there is. And thirdly, you know, there's been a pandemic. It's been very difficult to play test cricket. Australia has not played test cricket overseas since, since 2019. So everyone's just happy to be playing test cricket. Look, I love seeing cricket played in this spirit. To see people try really hard, really hard, be ultra competitive, 
but do it with a smile on their face. That's fantastic. And it sends a fantastic message to young people who play the game. I think at times in the past, Australia played cricket with a scowl and they were a little harder to love, even for Australians. Definitely. And um, Peter, moving on further, not talking about, about cricket anymore, uh, uh, Adil, this is not the first time that Peter has been here All right. to Pakistan in 94. Peter wow. was here in Pakistan, but as a tourist. I, I want you to narrate Amazing. your journey, Peter. Oh, gosh, why do you keep bringing that up? It's just <laughs> to demonstrate how old I am, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you about my journey. Uh, yeah. This is possibly the longest I have spent in Lahore because I came across, I was in India, and I came across the border from Amritsar, walked across the border back through that line of control or whatever it is there with the... Uh, guards marching up and down and scowling at each other like our cricketers used to do. I turned right and I went up to Pashtunka, you call it now, didn't you? But back then it was the northwest frontier, frontier province. province. Yeah. Yeah. I went straight up to Peshawar and from Peshawar I branched out. I went to Dara, I went to Deer, I wow. spent, went to Chitral. I spent a lot of time in the Kalash Valley, all those fascinating places up north. Um, uh, I was here for two or three months so I, and I really enjoyed it and it broke my heart that I never got to come here and watch Test Match Cricket so this is pretty special for me. This is ticking one of those boxes on the bucket list of life. Wow, Peter, again I would say welcome to Pakistan. You've yeah. heard this um, phrase a lot of times now but um, I hope you, you just have a wonderful tour here and thank you, thanks a lot for all your time.